Number 32. Suppose your car was mirrored deeply in the mud and you wanted to use the method illustrated in figure 4.36 to pull it out. Letter A. What force would you have to exert perpendicular to the center of the rope to produce a force of 1200, or excuse me, 12,000 newtons on the car if the angle is 2 degrees? All right. So the picture on the right-hand side here shows what's going on, right? Now, what I really need to do is there's, although they, they're talking specifically about the car, I really should look at this whole thing in terms of an entire system, meaning the car and the tree. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in my uh, axis here, I'm going to basically draw two. Okay. So this particular point here will represent the car. So let's detail the force vectors there. Okay. So it looks like we have this tensional force. I know that looks like a 45 degree angle or so, but it's two degrees, all right? And they said 2.00, but that's fine, two degrees. And then um, there's another force here in the picture right on the tree trunk, pointing in the exact uh, same and opposite direction. Well, not exactly the opposite direction, but the X's will cancel here. Okay, so it's pointing like that. Yeah, I'll just extend a little bit and make it look a little more similar. I'm really getting bad at this. Okay. That's as good as it's going to get today, ladies and gentlemen. So two degrees. Okay. Now this, uh, there is some force here, right? It's called T in the problem, right? But do we know what it is? Well, we kind of do, right? Because it says, re if you uh, read it carefully, it says, what force must you, ex must you exert perpendicular to, to the center of the rope to produce a force of 12,000 newtons on the car? So this T value here is actually 12,000. Okay, so I do know that. So instead of calling it T, I'm going to call it 12,000. And if the if there's a 12,000 right Newton force here, then there must be an equal but opposite force on the tree trunk of 12,000. Okay, so now they're asking us to find the F perpendicular. So first, before we connect the two, all right, let's just try to focus in on uh, this particular picture and break each of them up into their own components, all right? Because basically what I'm looking to do is I'm trying to find the resultant vector. And actually, I mean, if you think about it, I kind of answered the question already. The resultant vector is going to look something like this, right? And guess what that resultant vector is in my picture at the top right? Yeah, it's the F perpendicular, right? So that's how they're connected. So let's find the components. We'll create a component table, okay? Component table, my X and my Y's. And uh, let's take a look at each of them. We'll call F1, right, F2, and then we'll sum them all up to be the uh, resultant, all right? So let's take a look at this as the first one. It doesn't really matter. So if I had to, um, Right, break that up into components. There is an X component here and then a Y component straight down, right? So how do I uh, find, uh, first, am I really even concerned about the X components? We can probably even speed this up, right? If you think the X component of the first vector on the left-hand side is pointing in this direction, and then the X component of the uh, tree trunks force is pointing in the exact opposite direction. And they're literally gonna have the same magnitude because both triangles here, right, will have the same hypotenuse and the, and the same angle. They're just going to differ in sign. All right, so just to speed this up, this whole column will cancel, and that'll just be zero, which we expected it to be, because we said the net result in four should be straight down, okay? So now why don't we detail just the Ys, okay? So what I want to do here is, oops, I want to try to find one of them here, all right? And then if I find one, I will know the other because they're both the same, right? Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to use sine because I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle, right? I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. So therefore, let's use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Sine of 2 degrees, right, is going to equal the opposite side, which, remember, is negative y, right? It's going to be a negative y, so I'll just call it negative y, uh, divided by uh, the hypotenuse of 12,000. Right, so my negative y value will be 12,000 sine of 2. Right, so just do the math and then distribute the negative on over. So 12,000 
times sine of 2. And it comes out to 418.7. So let's round to 419, okay? So we get 419. And that's in Newtons, and it's negative. So let's, let's say we found that one right, that I just circled. So if I plug that into the table, it would be negative 419 up here, right? And then what would it be for this vector right there? It'd be literally the same thing, so I'm not even going to bother calculating it again because it'd be 419. And then what would the total be here? Well, just add them up, right? Just add them together. So we would get 830, what is that? Eight, uh, yeah, 838. Let me just make sure. Yeah, 838. So it'd be a negative 838. Okay, great. Now just remember, right? So this is the answer, okay? So remember that this resultant vector is the, back to the picture, it is the force parallel that is applied, okay? So to sum it, to, to answer the question, then the force parallel that must be applied uh, would be equal to, and we can probably make it even positive here, um, because the negative just tells us the direction. Really what we could do is say 838, right, Newtons uh, due south or something. Due south, if we had to give a direction to it, all right? But the negative is, is correct because it should be pointing down. All right, so that works out, so that's great. So that takes care of that. Now let's look, move on to letter B. So real ropes stretch under such forces. What force would be exerted on the car? If the angle increases to seven degrees and you still apply the same force found in part A to its center. So what they're basically trying to say here, all right, is that um, this same force of 838 Newtons will still be applied, okay? So in terms of a picture now, let's try to represent this. Let me change the color. Okay, so let's represent this. So now what I'm gonna be doing here so I'm looking now for the force applied to the car. Okay, so that means I actually don't know the T now. That's what I'm looking for. And it says that this angle here is increased to, what was it, 7 degrees now, right? But we still want to apply the same force, okay? So remember that if this coordinate system is the tree, excuse me, is the car, then we would still have to do the same thing for the tree here. Right, and notice that when I draw in the vector here, right, I'd have another t value, right, that's t, and this is seven degrees, okay? So now if I had to detail both y components here, right, there's a y component there, and there's a y component there, okay? What are the value, or what is the value of both of them individually? The value of both of them individually, remember, should be half of the 838 because the 838 was the total of both of them, right? So it just goes back to the 419 that we found before. So each of these will be 419 Newtons, okay? Okay, so that's great. So now if I know that, can I just solve for the, for the tension now? Does it really even matter which, which side I do first? No, it really doesn't matter, right? I can, I can just look at this triangle or I could try to take them all together, it really doesn't matter, all right? So let's just look at this particular picture. All right, so uh, I'm looking for the hypotenuse, right? I know the side opposite of the angle, so let's use sine here. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Sine of seven degrees will now equal negative 4.19 4 uh, all over my uh, hypotenuse value, right? So now, Hypotenuse will be, and we really don't even need the negative sign necessarily because the hypotenuse, it won't be necessarily negative. Um, it, it'll have a certain angle to it, but I'll plug it in anyway like that. So we get sine of 7. Actually, I apologize. So we get negative 4.19 divided by that in sine of 7, right? And that works out to be now, that's a negative value, a negative 3 point, what's it, 4 or 4 or so? Yeah, 3.44 times 10 to the third newtons, okay? In terms of, though, answering the question, I would leave out the negative sign uh, just because they're saying, uh, what force would you exert? Now, again, it's not really this. I, I, if I had to give a, um, 
I would be using really the angle here to tell, to give the direction of this tension force because the tension force is not in a pure X or a pure Y uh, dimension there. All right, so in any case, uh, the answer here would be for part B, it would be 3.44 times 10 to the third Newtons. That would be the force that the vehicle would experience. All right, guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I will see you in the next lesson.